Hi, uh, I'm Daniel Block. I work for a company called Global Innovation Fund. I'm originally from the U.S., currently based in Washington, D.C., and we're an uh, impact investment fund that invests across emerging markets, uh, headquartered in London and, and with a second office in Washington. We are looking for startups that have very evidence-driven impact theories and results. Startups that are based in emerging markets, our primary markets being Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and South Asia, and startups that are tackling challenges across three core themes, uh, improving low-income populations access to markets and services, improving the access to public services for the poor, and enhancing agency for women and girls. Mm -hmm. So businesses across a pretty broad range of sectors and stages, but that are driving evidence-based uh, innovations to support and uh, alleviate persistent poverty in the developing world. On a personal level, I have an interesting background that I try to bring to support startups in the developing world. I've spent a, num a number of years living and working in Latin America and in Africa. Previously to that, I worked for a global investment bank in New York, working across effectively global capital markets on public markets. Mm -hmm. So I bring, bring a pretty significant understanding of some of the emerging market challenges that, uh, that startups face, as well as the developed market uh, movements around uh, how capital flows, how capital flows both in the, public, in the public sphere as well as in private markets, mm -hmm. and try to support startups both with uh, effective business strategy and coaching, as well as understanding of the key financial drivers of their business and the, the key metrics that are needed for them to get to the next stage and to raise follow-on capital to, to grow, scale, and, and strengthen their impact. I decided to come to SeedStars today for two main reasons. The first being I think that the SeedStars platform and what they're doing is quite unique and impressive in terms of building a diverse network that is supporting entrepreneurs across the developing world, being able to contribute to that network to help support and provide mentorship and guidance to the startups, as well as the overall Seed Stars organization is something that excites me and that I'm happy to, to do and to contribute to. Uh, the second reason being that as an impact investment fund that's focused on wide range of businesses across emerging markets, being able to have access in a single day to companies that are in a wide range of sectors that are of interest to us, a wide range of markets that are of interest to us, and investors that are in those markets that can be strong, uh, strong partners for us is uh, extremely, extremely valuable and an extremely unique experience. For us, the core uh, investment thesis around why we invest and where we invest is uh, about reducing systemic inequality in, in the world, and in particular addressing cases of persistent poverty that lead to a significant uh, chunk of the world population to be stuck in poverty traps and poverty cycles. In order to do that, we focus specifically on populations that are living on less than $5 a day, which are, as a result, predominantly focused on emerging markets. Our th investment thesis, as a result, is very much tied to large markets in emerging, large, large countries, rather, in emerging markets, where there's a significant portion of the population that is below five, living on less than $5 a day and, um, and can be benefited from technologies and innovations that help them move up the economic ladder. Honestly, the impact investment space is a emerging sector that has grown quite significantly over the last several years, and now I guess we can say over more than a decade, but is still a small sector, somewhat fragmented, and with a number of challenges around finding the right types of capital for the right types of, uh, types of businesses. One of the challenges that we try and address is the limited amount of concessional long-term and patient capital for startups that are in emerging markets struggling to be able to achieve the scale that, uh, that competitors of theirs or, or their similar types of businesses in developed markets would, would face, but struggling as well with some of the challenges of being based in emerging markets that are more volatile, that have more cyclicality. We try and do that again through sort of a, 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 an approach that's much more patient and concessional. I would say on an individual level for, for GIF, one of the challenges that we face is 
making sure that as we are based in, uh, in London and DC, that we have close connections to the startups um, and to the ecosystems through partners and in, in the markets that we're focused on. To be honest, I think a lot of the startups in, in the emerging markets have very similar perspectives and insights as startups do in the US and in Europe. Naturally, there are certain sort of local perspectives and challenges that startups in, in emerging markets face, but they tend to be oftentimes incredibly uh, scrappy, incredibly savvy in terms of building resilient businesses that are tackling local challenges or adapting solutions that have come from other parts of the world to their markets. There are startups that typically don't have access to as much funding, as much resources, uh, as many networks, or as large an initial market to be able to, uh, to experiment in. Uh, and as a result, tend to be highly resilient and um, able to weather challenges that oftentimes startups in other markets wouldn't necessarily be able to address. Impact investing is incredibly important to me because I think we're at a critical point in the development of humanity and in the trajectory of the, of the world and the planet. I think that in an ideal world, we'd have a set of uh, structures, systems and imposed by regulations and by governments that would ensure that the world operates in a way that promotes economic sustainability and environmental sustainability. But we can't wait for standardization across regulations throughout the world. What we need is for private actors throughout the world to doing things in a way that's more sustainable, that leads to greater prosperity. Because if we don't, we're gonna be in a place where no matter what happens 15, 20, 30, 50 years from now, the world won't be able to, to exist in a way that's thriving for, for everyone or potentially even exist at all.